In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to translations, and the parent functions we're going to use are absolute value, quadratic, and some square root functions. Um, so you don't really have to have a ruler, but I will. And a graphing calculator, I'm going to use the Casio, but it'll work fine on a TI as well. For starters, we're going to do this one by hand. We're going to graph the parent function of the absolute value of x. So remember, absolute value makes things positive. So if I were filling out my table, what happens between the x and the y coordinate is, whatever the x coordinate was, the y coordinate is the same number, just positive. This causes my graph to start at 0, 0, because the absolute value of 0 is 0. And then we go up with a slope of 1 over here on the right. And we go up with a slope of negative 1 over here on the left. And that's my V-shape. I connect my points with nice straight lines and arrows on both ends to show that it keeps going forever. I'm going to label this graph y equals the absolute value of x because later I'm going to ask you to put some more graphs on there as well. So down at the bottom here, it says, using words, describe what your graph looks like. I call this one the V-shape. All right, now we want to see how we can graph this on our graphing calculator. So on my Casio calculator, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to have uh, my menu button. And from the menu, I'm going to go to the graph menu. That may not be in the same place on yours, but go into the graph. Be sure you clear out anything that's there. To get to the absolute value function, I go under option. And then I hit number, because absolute value is something you do with a number. And then I hit F1 for absolute value. Wherever my absolute value symbols are, I have to put parentheses. So that's what I'm going to graph. I also want to adjust my view window. So I hit Shift the yellow button and then F3 for view window. I want to be sure my view window is set at F3, which is standard, which is negative 10 to 10. And that way I can look at my graph. OK, so there's my nice V shape. All right, let's see where the next page is. So on the next page here for part B, they're asking me to graph in Y2 the absolute value of X minus 6. And I'm going to graph that in the same window. So if I'm on my calculator, I need to exit back to get to my Y equals. And I'm going to go option, number, absolute value again. I'm going to put my X inside parentheses. And then the minus 6 is on the end, so I have to put that outside of the parentheses. I want to be sure I use the subtract button. The subtract button is right over here above the execute button and not the negative button. So let's go ahead and draw that one. And there we can see what happened. On number three, it says on your screen, you've graphed those two functions. How are your graphs the same? Well, looking at the picture, they're both V shapes, right? How are your graphs different? Well, Y2 moved down six. How are the equations of these two things the same? So when we're asking about the equation, we really are just talking, looking purely at the numbers right here. Well, how are the numbers the same? They both have the absolute value of x in the symbols. How are they different? y2 has a subtract 6 on the end. So we're going to have to assume here that it's the subtract 6 on the end that made this graph move down 6. I ask you, if you did not have a graphing calculator, how would you graph this? I would move down 6 from the origin and then make my V. OK. All right, so now we're going to compare the absolute value of x and the absolute value of x plus 3. It asks, how are the equations the same? Well, just looking at the equation, again, both of them have that absolute value of x. How are the equations different? Uh, the second equation has a plus 3 on the end. So it says, if you did not have the graphing calculator, how would you graph the absolute value of x plus 3? What do you think is going to happen? Well, up here, subtracting 6 on the end moved us down 6. So up here, adding 3 on the end 
is going the opposite direction, I'm going to assume it will move the V up 3. Now let's try and confirm whether or not that worked. So I'm going to come back to my calculator, I'm going to exit back, and I'm going to go to the second equation. I'm just going to scroll over to the end, back up a little, and change that absolute value of x to have a plus 3 instead. And when I graph it, I can see right up here, my v moved up three spaces. It now has a y-intercept of 3. So if I'm answering, the adding 3 to the absolute value of x moved the graph up 3. It says on the grid on the first page, go ahead and put on that absolute value of x plus 3 and label it. So let's pop back there. I'm going to go up 3 units from my origin, so I'm going to count up 3 units. From there, I'm just going to count up 1 over 1, and I'm going to count up 1, 1 to the left, and I'm going to get my v. And when I say label it, I mean let's write over here y is the absolute value of x plus 3, so that when we look back at it, we remember which one's which. Okay, back to this page. Um, number seven says, in general, how does adding or subtracting a number affect the graph? Well, what it looks like if we have, that's called a translation, is another word in geometry for a move. We also called it a slide sometimes or we called it a shift, all of those words could mean I'm moving my graph. So adding on the outside moves the graph up and subtracting on the outside. By the way, I'm saying, whoops, I'm saying outside. When I say outside, I mean outside the symbols there or on the end. Moves the graph down. Okay, so let's see what's going to happen on the next page when we change up where we put our addition. So number eight, I ask you to graph y1 is the absolute value of x, and in y2, I'm going to have the absolute value of x with a minus 2 that's inside the absolute value symbol. So if I'm coming over here, I just scrolled over to delete what I had in there. I need to have the absolute value of x, and then I'm going to put a subtract 2 and close my parentheses. It's really important that wherever these absolute value symbol bars are, that's where the parentheses go on your calculator, all right? So let's go ahead and hit execute and graph this thing, and I can see, oh, where did my graph move? My graph moved to the right on that one. So it says, how are the graphs the same for part B? Again, they're both Vs. How are the graphs different? Y2 moved 2 to the right. How are the equations the same? So just purely looking at these two equations up here, what is the same about the equations? They're both the absolute value of x again. And how are the equations different? y2 had a subtract 2 inside the absolute values bar, right? Inside the absolute value. So um, it says on your screen you've graphed the absolute value of x and the absolute value of x plus 4. Well, I haven't graphed that yet, so let me put that up here. Um, so I'm going to change the second function here. Instead of a minus 2 on the inside, I'm going to change that to a plus 4 on the inside. And what just happened? How are the graphs the same? Again, we're both v's. How are the graphs different? y2 moved four to the left this time. Okay, how are the equations the same? Well, again, they were both the absolute value of x. And how are the equations different? 
y2 had a plus 4 inside the absolute value. So it looks like something strange is happening here. If I didn't have a calculator, how could I graph this? I would move my V shape four to the left. Now, a plus four to me usually makes me think of the right four, but this is going to the left instead. Just like up here, a minus two to me on the top function, I would think that would move me to the right, but it really moves me, uh, or I would think it would move me to the left, it really moved me to the right. So this seems to be going the opposite way of what I think. Let's look at number 11. If we compare the absolute value of x and the absolute value of x minus 3, how are they the same? Again, both the absolute value of x. How are they different? I'm going to call it y2, or the second one has a subtract 3 inside. So how do we think we're going to graph this thing? Well, I think we're going to move the V shape 3 to the right because it seems like the inside's doing the opposite of what I think it's going to do. Let's scroll down. It's asking us to graph this on our calculator. Just to confirm, I'm going to go over to the end again, back up. I'm doing the absolute value of x minus 3, and you can see it moved 3 to the right. So what effect did subtracting 3 from x have on the graph? It moved 3 right, just like I thought. It says on the grid on the first page, let's go ahead and add this. So I'm going to scroll back here to my first page again, and I'm supposed to put on the absolute value of x minus 3, which moved 3 to the right. starting to overlap my blue graph up there. But if I want to label it, I'm just going to label it over here. Y is the absolute value of X, and this was a subtract 3. So when I took my graph right here, my graph at the origin, when I took that graph and I put a minus 3 inside, it moved me to the right, versus when I took that graph and I put a plus 3 out here on the end, that one moved me up 3. So addition and subtraction are moving me. Anything that's on the outside is moving me up and down, and anything that's on the inside is moving me left and right. So in 13, it says, how does adding or subtracting a number from x affect the graph? So when you add to x, it moves left. When you subtract from x, it moves right. So it's the opposite direction of the positive negative that you would expect. OK, so here's a little translations practice. So we start out, number one asks you to graph the absolute value of x, which we should be pretty comfortable by now graphing. It's just our V shape. And we're going to make that one. If we wanted to fill in the table, the absolute value of 0, 0, 1 is 1, 2 is 2, 3 is 3, and the negatives all just turn positive. The parent function is called, in words, the absolute value. You do need to know those words written out, not just with the symbols. All right. So in number two, it asks me to take that graph and graph the absolute value of x minus 2. So we should recognize the absolute value of x tells me it's going to be a v-shape. And then this minus 2 here is outside of the symbols. So what letter is outside of the symbols? Y is outside of the symbols. Y is the up and down axis. So my minus 2 is going to move down 2 because it's going to be a Y change. So I'm going to start out from my origin. I'm going to go down 2, and I'm going to put that anchor point on there. That's now my point that I'm going to use to draw the rest of my graph. I'm just going to follow the same shape I did before. 
the shape I did before, just made a slope of 1 on each side, and that's how I got my V. Okay. If I wanted to, my parent function is still the absolute value. Oh, and then I wrote this up here. I wrote move down to. That's also called translate down to is another word I can use for that. It's a translation from geometry. All right. In this table, you can't see where the symbol ended there. That was the absolute value of x minus 2. If I wanted to, I could also plug these numbers into a table and see what I get out. If I plug in a negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. Take away 2 gives me 1. If I plug in a negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. If I plug in a negative 1, the absolute value is positive 1, minus 2 is negative 1. So I can keep going with this table, and I can evaluate each of these numbers, but I have a lot of options to make addition mistakes, and it takes me a while to do that sometimes. A lot of times what's easier is to graph by these transformations and just think, oh, I need to move down 2, so I'm going to move down 2, and that's where I start my graph. I'm not going to worry about the coordinates of each of those points. All right, let's look at number 3. Number 3 is asking us to graph two separate functions. It's asking us to graph first f of x equals x squared. Well, f of x is x squared is my u shape. That's the parent function. The parent function is called a quadratic. If I were plugging points into a table starting at 0, 0, because 0 squared is 0. I'll put fill that in. 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 squared is also 1. So I put the points on there going over 1, up 1. 2 squared is 4, and negative 2 squared is also 4. So from my origin, I can go over 2, up 4, and that's where I'm going to plot my next point. I'm going to also mirror that over there on the left. 3 squared is 9. So from my origin, I can count over 3, up 9. Is that 9? And then I'm going to mirror that over on the left. Sorry, I counted wrong there, so I just fixed it, and I regraphed these two points up 9. All right, so my next function that I'm supposed to graph is the at x squared minus 6. So when I go to graph this, I should look at it and say, oh, x squared, that's a U-shape. The minus 6 is on the end. That's outside. Outside is an up-down change, so this should move me down 6. So my transformation is either translate or move or slide or shift down 6. So I'm going to start out from my origin, and I'm going to scooch down 6. I never connected the dots for my green function up here. So this is my parent function. Let me connect that with a nice smooth curve with ours on both ends. But literally, I'm going to take this graph, and I'm just going to scoot it down. Okay? So let's see how I can do that by points. The shape of my graph was 1 squared was 1, so I go over 1, up 1 in either direction. 2 squared was 4, so from my origin, my new anchor point down here, I go over 2, up 4, and I put my next point. 3 squared is 9. So from my anchor point right here, I'm going to go over 3, and then I'm going to go up 9. Now I'm going to connect this with a nice smooth U shape. Arrows on both ends. If I wanted to do this from a table, and I think following order of operations for this, if I were to plug into this table, the first thing I'd do when I plug in negative 3 is I would square the negative 3. So that's what's in the second column, which was 9. Now, I already know what all the squared answers are because they were over here. So I can just copy that whole column from my table. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of those values and I'm going to subtract 6 from them. 
So I'm going to do 9 minus 6 is 3. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. 0 minus 6 is minus 6. Then my pattern repeats. It goes back to negative 5, negative 2, and 3. If I look at each of these and I look at the original x value and the new y value, that's a coordinate that will show up over here on my graph. So each of these ordered pairs, when x is 0, y is negative 6. That's the vertex of my parabola or the anchor point of my whole graph from where I start. Okay, let's try a couple more. All right, number four, our parent function is the quadratic again. And I can plot that on my graph. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. So I'm making my parent function on the graph and connecting it with a nice U shape. I could also fill in my table. Then I need to graph my transformation. In this one, it's an x squared, so I know it's a U shape. That was my quadratic parent function. But I have my plus 3. This time is on the inside. What letter is on the inside? X is on the inside. X goes left and right. X also goes the opposite way you think it's going to go. So this is really going to take me to the left three units. So my transformation is going to be move or translate left three. So I start out at my origin. I move three to the left. This is my anchor point for my whole graph. I know the shape of a U is over one, up one. Over two, up four, because two squared is four. Over three, up nine, because three squared is nine. And that's how I'm going to get my U shape here to connect the dots. Honestly, I don't even want to mess with the table on this one, because to me it's easier to just count from my anchor point. So if you don't want to mess with the table, that's totally fine. But I know some of you do better when you look at tables and numbers, so I want to go over how you would do this. If you don't want to listen, you could just fast forward a second on the video until you see me scroll down. So if I want to know the points that I'm going to square, I kind of have to have worked backwards. I need to know if I started with negative 6 and I add 3 to it, then I'd have negative 3, which when I square it would be 9. If I started with negative 5, when I add 3 to it, I'd have negative 2, which then I square it, I get 4. So I can keep doing this process. And what I have in my table are the coordinates of these points. Negative 6, 9, that was right up here. Negative 5, 4, that one was right here. So I could keep going with these plottings, and they would be the coordinates of my points. All right, so don't worry about the tables. We could do more numerically next year if you're not uh, a big fan of them. All right, new parent function. We've got the square root of x. So what does the square root of x look like? That's my half a sideways parabola. On this one, when I'm plugging in points to remember how my graph goes, again, I start at 0, 0, because the square root of 0 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1, so I go over 1, up 1. I don't know the square root of 2 or the square root of 3. They're not nice numbers. Now, in, in real life, I wouldn't draw these lines that I'm erasing right now, because I just use them to show you where I put my pencil on the Okay, let's see if we have anything else here. All right, the absolute value of x minus 2. Well, I should look at this function and say, absolute value, that tells me my graph needs to be a V-shape. What do I have? I have a minus 2. That tells me I'm going to move 2 in some direction. I've got to think where it is. It's inside the symbols. It's with the x. The x is left and right. So that means it's going to move 2 left and right, Inside is always the opposite of what you think, 
So a minus 2 is really going to move you 2 to the right. I start out at the origin. I move 2 to the right. That's my anchor point for my whole graph. From there, I just make a V-shape where I have a slope of 1 and a slope of negative 1 on the sides. Connect the points, and there I go. So my parent function, again, was the absolute value. And I moved to right because I had a minus 2 on the inside. Okay, um, My video is getting a little long here, so I'm not going to do the table for that one. All right, number 7. Again, an absolute value, so I know I'm going to be a V-shape. This one has a plus 1, so that tells me I'm going to move 1. But which way? The 1 is on the outside, just like the Y is. Outside, the Y is an up-down change. So this is going to move me 1 up because it's a plus 1. So I start out 1 up, and then I make my slope of 1, or negative 1 on the sides, and I connect the dots. I put arrows on both ends. Okay, let's turn over to number 8 here. On this one, they asked me to graph my parent function. And again, my square root of 0 was 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. And that's how I get my parent function on there. Next, I want to graph the square root of x plus 4. This plus 4 was on the inside, so that's going to move me left and right. It goes the opposite way of what you'd think. So you would think positive would move you to the right, but in fact, it's going to move you 4 to the left because it always goes the wrong direction on the inside. So I'm going to start out 4 units to the left, and then I'm going to follow my shape. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. That's how I get my shape. I connect with my smooth points. Again, I'm going to erase these little lines. They were just for your benefit. I don't really want them on my graph. Okay? All right. The last one has two transformations. This one has an absolute value. So since it's an absolute value, we know that this is going to be a V-shape. It has a plus 3 on the inside. So on the inside is going to move us left and right. A plus 3 is going to move us left 3. So that's where we're going to go first. We also, at the same time, have a minus 2 on the outside, which is going to move us down 2. So I start out at the origin. I move 3 to the left and down 2, and that's where my whole graph is starting. From there, I just make my normal V-shape, which has a slope of 1 in either direction, and there we go. Thanks. Come into class with any questions that you have, and uh, hopefully we should be catching on soon.